Hey, how's it going? It's Keith Townsend from the CTOadvisor.com with a bit of a rant of a CTO dose. I'm going to try and make this be as beneficial as possible, tie two themes together. I put out a Twitter uh, request acting for people to give me ideas. And then alongside that, I tweeted an a interaction I had with a CTO some months ago who wanted to use multi-cloud to basically save money. Uh, Puma Schmidt asked me to do something on compliance and governance. And I think this is, I think, a great topic to meld into, I think, a, a source of angst with me in the community. And as I talk to organizations about their cloud strategy, one consistent theme that I get is that there's organizations that's anxious to do multi-cloud. Not exactly sure why they want to do multi-cloud, but they are certain that they want to do multi-cloud. One of those reasons is to save money. You know what? Full stop, no. Don't, don't attempt to spend up a huge t- team of people, your vendors, etc., trying to save on cloud costs by spreading workloads across. There's way too co- many complexities to deal with just to save cost focused on your single cloud provider or or separate cloud providers and driving those costs down in those individual cloud providers, which gets us to the point of why people are pursuing multi-cloud strategies. First off, everyone has multi-cloud, whether you're using salesforce.com, workforce type SaaS offerings, ADP, SaaS, in a combination of IaaS or platform as a service from Microsoft, Azure, GCP, or AWS, we all have multi-cloud. The frustrations, I think, enterprise architects, CTOs, CIOs experience when they look at multi-cloud is that it's just, their cloud environment is just overwhelming. They have these things that have grown organically, whether it's within their own organizations or outside, and they just don't have a handle on the overall governance of cloud. You may have a very mature data center practice in which governance is 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 lock and step with the business. You've over the years you've developed a process for change management, change control. Auditor, auditors can come in, audit your environment, and you have a handle on the environment. We lose a bit of control when we go out to the cloud initially, just one cloud. I've shared the story in the past of how uh, Netflix went down uh, during a Christmas Eve due to poor, not necessarily poor uh, configuration management, change management, but because of a Mitch Max and configuration management, change management. Netflix made a change, AWS made a change, those two changes weren't coordinated, and as a result, Netflix had an outage. Enterprises, we ex- don't have the scale of Netflix. We experience these very same things, especially as we deal with multi-cloud. There are drivers for multi-cloud. For example, you have machine learning you want to do on a data set. It, GCP offers GPUs, uh, just platforms uh, to that are just better for doing machine learning. AWS is leading the way when it comes to functions as a service. If you're building applications that lend themselves uh, for functions, that could literally, and this is an exception to the rule, that can literally save you thousands of dollars a month on an application if you built it using functions and the triggers and and capabilities of a Lambda, then these are two very good reasons to go one with AWS and another with with GCP. But on whole, I think organizations need to first understand the governance around a single cloud before they go adopting a multi-cloud strategy and biting off more than they can chew. They need to first understand how they're going to take their governance model from their data center and bring that into the public cloud. Two completely different infrastructures, two different types of capabilities. 
we can't bend the public cloud to our policies and wills. So we have to work around the public cloud providers. So bringing our governance to from the data center into the cloud simply won't work unless we're doing a VMC, a VMware cloud on AWS. Uh, and even still that we, we lose a bit of control. VMware is going to upgrade and update the version of, of VMware Cloud on AWS, the underlying vSphere version, much faster than we do on-prem. We have to just work around that. So I'm not a fan of the concept of enterprises embracing multi-cloud before they've mastered a single cloud. Master a single cloud. As, as there's projects that's out, and doing their thing in multiple clouds, you can offer them best level of service, but have a opinionated view on the cloud that you support from a CTO enterprise architect perspective. This is the preferred architecture. This is the uh, set of services that we support. Here's how we implement these services on a single cloud. Understand the frictions that it creates in your governance address those governance issues and then expand out from there when it comes to multi-cloud. This is, you know, pretty different than some advice you get from storage vendors who talk through, you know, you should have a multi-cloud uh, strategy for accessing storage from different cloud providers. Yes, that's true. Technically you should have, you should think about that stuff and you should make purchasing decisions based on that. But from a practical implementation of your cloud and cloud strategy start with one cloud expand out from there uh and you'll find you have plenty of work and you'll be a lot more successful there's a lot of people that disagree with me and you've already voiced your opinion some of you on twitter but you know come back and let's have the conversation i'm at cto advisor on twitter you can find me on linkedin as well as these cto dose videos you can search for the hat hashtag hashtag cto dose no spaces talk to you next cto dose until then follow me on the web the cto advisor.com